on a practical exam, the first thing that you're going to want to ask yourself when you see a vertebrae, first thing you're going to want to ask yourself is, does it have transverse foramina? These are the transverse foramina. Remember, foramina means holes, um, and they're out uh, transverse. Okay, so they're on the transverse plane. If you have transverse foramina, you know you're at the cervical level. Okay, but that's not quite enough. I need to find out, is it just a regular generic cerv cervical vertebrae, or is it uh, the atlas or the axis? Okay, so, all right. So I first want to look for the transverse foramina. So I have transverse foramina here and here. So I know it's a cervical vertebrae. But now I need to decide, is it a C1 vertebrae, which looks like that, or a C2 vertebrae, which looks like that. All right, so let's talk about the differences. First of all, notice that each one of these, even though it doesn't look like it, if I flip this over, I do have transverse foramina. So all of these would have transverse foramina. This is a body. This is a body. The body is where the vertebral discs lie. So you get body, disc, body, disc, body, disc, all the way up on the skeleton, okay? So, but C1 is the only vertebrae that does not have a body. If it has no body, it's got to be the atlas. The reason it's called the Atlas, it's named after the Greek god Atlas, who, who uh, held the weight of the world on his shoulders. So it makes sense. Okay, Atlas was the Greek god who held the weight of the world on his shoulders. And that's kind of what the Atlas really does. My C2, instead of having no body, it has kind of a double body. And it has this phallic looking thing Okay, this is called the dens. This is the dens. So what this is, this is the axis, this is C2. And what this does is the dens of the axis or C2 basically acts as the body for the Atlas C1 vertebrae as well. So C1 does not have a body, C2 has body enough for two. All right, make sense? Okay, so if you see the transverse foramina, then you know, oh, okay, transverse foramina, I have to be in the cervical region. All right, <clears throat> so a couple structures that you need to know, and I'll go over each of them here. So this is the only one that has the dens. This is the dens. This is the spinous process, okay? This is also the spinous process, and this C1 has a really small spinous process. The spinous processes, if you run your finger down somebody's spine, those little bumps that you feel, bump, 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 okay? Each of those, that's a spinous process. That's actually the pointy parts of the spine that come out, all right? And those act as attachment points for a lot of the back muscles. All of these, so here and here, this and this, it looks like they go together with something, right? So we actually have a pair up top and a pair on the bottom. I'm not going to be picky on inferior or superior. You could just generically call them articulating processes. Okay, so articulating processes. If you want to sound, sound smart, say processes instead of processes. I don't know why, but. That's just what scientists say. It's when you sound smart. Okay. All right, so those are articulating processes here. All right, for a regular cervical vertebrae, this is the body. These are the transverse foramina. Transverse foramina. This is the vertebral foramen. The vertebral foramen. This is where the spinal cord goes. All right. This is that spinous process. These are articulating processes here, okay? And then right by the uh, transverse foramen, I've got the transverse process. 
transfers process, transfers process. Okay? If you're curious, the lamina is the flat part here and the flat part here. But like I said, it doesn't really do anything, so I just leave it out. Let's leave that guy over here. And let's look at a thoracic level vertebrae. All right, so you're in a practical exam. You go up to that station and you see a vertebrae. First thing you ask yourself is, does it have transverse foramina? I look at this thing and I say, nope, no transverse foramina, so it's not a cervical. So now I just have to decide, well, is it a thoracic vertebrae or a lumbar vertebrae? And let me show you how to do that. If I hold these just right, can you kind of see that there's five horns? One, two, three, oops, four, and five. Okay, there's kind of five horns there. And the spinous process looks like a moose horn. Spinous process is rounded and goes straight posterior. Versus, this one just has three horns. One, two, and three. Okay, so it has three horns, and when I look at this spinous process, so this one looks like a rounded moose horn, whereas this one is sharp and pointy. So the spinous process here is sharp and pointy and points inferiorly, okay? Whereas this one is a lot more rounded. All right, so rounded is lumbar. Pointy is thoracic. All right. Um, another thing that you can look at is see these things that poke up? All right, these are the articulating processes. The articulating processes at the thoracic level go almost outward, okay? They go straight back. Whereas the articulating processes in the lumbar is here and here. They face one another, all right? So the articulating processes face one another in the lumbar region. So that's another clue that can help too. And then also look for that kind of that five point thing. So let's make sure you know what the structures look like at these levels too. So uh, let's do the thoracic first. All right, so this is the vertebral foramen, the vertebral foramen. This is the body. Articulating process, articulating process, transverse process, transverse process, and spinous process. Okay. And if you're interested, I also have two articulating processes in the bottom here as well. One there and one there. Okay. And last but not least, light at the end of the tunnel. All right, here is my lumbar, my lumbar vertebrae. That was my lumbar vertebrae. Okay. In this one, <clears throat> so I've got the vertebral foramen. I've got a nice big body on this guy. Okay. The articulating processes in this one kind of face each other. So here's one and here's one. So those are articulating processes. The transverse processes are here, going out on the transverse plane. If you're wondering what it looks like down here, that's your spinous process. And these are the inferior articulating processes here. Okay. And that is the axial skeleton, everything you need to know. Questions, comments, panic attacks? Or all of the above? Okay.